To continue with the next session on the polyketides. So what we have been focusing on very much so, so far today has been on formation of the aromatic ring here. And, uh, but if, if we take a look at these two molecules, the one that we talked about at the end, Maria told us that a lot of places uh, we had oxygens that were missing, like here, here, and on every second on every second carbon. So, so this molecule actually is, we can say it's been divided into two. We have this very aromatic part and then we have what we call highly reduced here. So something has happened in this position and this is what I will address more in, in the following. And also this is an example, this is citronyl, a mycotoxin that uh, a lot of fungi produce. And you can see in this case here, it's not a, an ordinary aromatic ring. So, so something has happened over here uh, to this molecule. And hopefully my, my, the following presentation will, will illustrate how this is, uh, is taking place. So first, first of all, I'd like to draw your attention to to these types of reduction uh, reactions that are happening. So we have, uh, we have the keto group up here. And the enzymes that are producing these uh, polyketides, they can reduce the keto group. First from, from keto group to hydroxy, uh, hydroxy group here. So the first enzymatic activity is uh, keto reductase uh, activity. And then, as you saw in, in the aldol, we, uh, we can lose water. We can have dehydrotase uh, enzymatic activity forming a double bond. And we can reduce all the way down to this uh, aliphatic uh, ring. So every time we go uh, one reduction step. You can see we add one proton here, but actually we also add one up here. So we have two uh, protons added uh, every time we have a reduction going on. So in biological systems, we have cofactors that facilitate these reductions. So NADPH, is a donor of protons in, in, in biological systems. And you can see we have them. We have the two protons here. Um, and one bond can... It's, uh, we can see we can have one proton uh, being added to this position here, and then we have um, we have another proton here. So in this way, we have formed the, the alcohol group. So as part of the keto reductase activity, we have uh, formation of NADP, and this can go uh, both ways. So. Actually, we can have, uh, if we have in the other direction, we have oxidation going on. Okay. So in the following, so I, I have another uh, reaction I will show you later on, which is called keto eno taut, uh, tautomery. So, and in, so, so what is important here is that whenever we have reduction going on, we add protons. We don't do that in, in, in the following type of reaction. So today we will talk a little bit about what is the structure of the enzyme, the polyketide synthase, that is doing these elongation steps? 
and we will elaborate much more on that when uh, Rasmus Fransen he joins us. So, but today we would like to introduce um, the different domains that are part of the, the enzymes uh, catalyzing formation of polyketides. So we have uh, acyl transfer and we have uh, acyl carrier protein domain. This is a loading module and then we have modules following uh, the loading modules. So the loading module is where we have the starter unit added onto and then we have the following modules and they all contain uh, a minimal uh, configuration. So we need to have the, the, the starter and extender units bound to the enzyme and then we have the acyl carrier protein that kind of moves the, the different units around. And then we have in here, we have optional uh, configurations. And those are the ones I just mentioned to you. We have the, the, the reduction steps that can be part of the optional domain. So if you read the book, you can read a, a different types of polyketides. So in what uh, Maria told you about early on is that in bacteria we have several modules. So whenever we have one reduction going on, we have a module doing exactly this reduction from a keto group to a hydroxy group. And down here you can see we have had a further uh, oxidation, no, not oxidation, reduction taking place. So this is, is in, a, in a, an extra module. This is different for fungi. The, the polyketide uh, synthases in fungi are iterative. So this means that this optional domain is taking care of all the reductions all the way down the, the elongated chain. So we will get back to that uh, when Rasmus comes here. So often we have this last part, which is called the thioesterase activity. So this is uh, the part of the, the enzyme where in the end, we actually have to, to cleave off the polyketide product from the enzyme. And this, uh, this enzymatic activity takes care of that. To show it in, in another way, acetyl coenzyme A, our starter unit, is, is bound to the loading molecule here as uh, ye the yellow dot. It's been taken up by the carrier protein. It's kind of like an arm that can, can move this unit around to another place in the, in the enzyme. And in this case, it's moved to the ketosynthase domain of the first module. And then we bring in the extender unit. And that can be added to the acyl transfer uh, domain. It's been taken up by the acyl carrier protein and this can then kind of swing all the way to this region of the enzyme and we can have the glycine condensation going on that we have been learning about in, in the first uh, session here. So for the aromatic polyketides we talked about so far today, we might not have any of these reduction steps going on. But in some cases we do. And when we have this acyl carrier protein, we can kind of imagine that it can move into this pocket where we have these different domains that can do either one. The first reduction here would be going from a keto group 
ketoreductase, and then we have the second, maybe, second reduction. We go from uh, hydroxyl group to, to double bond, or we might even have a third reduction going on. So in bacteria, as I just mentioned, this would be the first module, taking care of the first reduction. And then it will move along on the enzyme when we have extended with a further unit. And then we'd have maybe a similar pattern there. So if you take a look at the exercise we had on this erythromycin, about two o'clock in this ring, macrocyclic ring, we had a carbon with no oxygen at all. It was completely reduced down. So in that case, on that bacterial enzyme, we had all three activities had been uh, happening. Lots of slides here. So illustrating that it moves along on, on the enzyme. So hopefully we now illustrated the basic mechanism, the Claisen condensation, and by this brief introduction, we've given you an idea about how this is actually happening on the enzyme. These small organic acids are, are loaded onto the enzyme, and we have this acyl carrier protein that can, can move around. So if we take a look, and go back to some of the structures we have been looking at so far today. We have this um, citronin molecule here. And here we have an OH. And we have an oxygen here that is part of a ring. So there we might consider, has some kind of reduction happened uh, during the biosynthesis of citronin? So here you can see we have in, in the precursor, this, we have had an aldol taking place in, in this position here. So here we lost we, we lost water in, in this position here. So Actually, going from here, the keto group, to an alcohol group, is not a reduction. So actually what happens when we have a ring system like this, is in, 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 in general, in organic chemistry, we would very much like We very much like to generate aromatic ring systems. This is favorable uh, energetic uh, wise. So now we got this first double bond from, from loss of water in the aldol uh, condensation. And maybe we can make an aromatic ring over here. And this is actually taking place more or less spontaneously in many systems due to this type of reaction. So here we, we have the keto group. And double bonds, in, in, uh, when we name them in organic chemistry, we call them enes. And here we have the ol. Alcohol, this is the ol. So this is the ene ol, and this is the keto group. So this just happens more or less spontaneously. And what I would like to draw your attention to here is that, again, remember, we chemists, we are lazy. So whenever we have here, we have one proton one proton and one proton. So altogether in this 
form, we have six protons. And actually, over here, we also have six protons. So this is not a reduction. The, the net amount of, of protons in both forms is the same. Um, so the way we can imagine that we go from the keto form could be we have, we already told you several times today that when we have this position here, two keto groups, and we have the protons here, they are acidic, so we can kind of imagine that we have some kind of base floating around in our biological system. We have the proton here. So we can imagine that the base is stealing away one of these protons. Then we have the, the electrons sitting here in this bond. They can move in to, to form the double bond in the ring. And then this uh, double bond in the upper carbon group can bind to another proton. So this is more or less how it happens. So actually I told you here we have six protons here and six over here. But when we go from one form to another, some of the protons here are actually not the same that we have over here. So this happens more or less spontaneously. So when we talk about formation of aromatic polyketides, this is a very important thing for you to remember. This, this just happens. So this kind of explained, hopefully to you, how in the biosynthesis towards citronin that we actually, the, 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 the carbonyl group we have here and this one, they just by keto, enol, tautomerism turns into this stable aromatic system. So when we have an alcohol group sitting on an aromatic ring, we call it a phenol group. So this is actually not an alcohol. It's, it's very different chemically to an, an ordinary alco <coughs> aliphatic alcohol group. Oops. But, on the other hand, the hydroxy group we got in this position came from the keto group we have here. So in this case, we must have had some keto reductase activity. So here you can see we were lazy once again. So here we have two H's added kind of to the molecule. So we have had a reduction taking place uh, in this position. So So if you remember the final structure of uh, of citronin, we have had we had some methyl groups sticking out in some positions. So this is what sometimes can be tricky when you look at the structure of a polyketide. 
we have the long chain of the polyketide and then we have some methyl groups that we sometimes cannot explain. How did they come there? And often they come by, they have been added by, by alkylation. So we have a donor molecule in biological systems that is called s methionine. We just call it SAM when we talk about how a methyl group can be added. It comes from, from SAM. Um, and actually we have, uh, we know from organic chemistry that when we have a phenol here, the positions auto and para, they, they, are, they, can, they, they are more prone to, to alkylation reactions taking place. And this again we can explain by, we have a base that is kind of stealing the proton, the bond we have here. Um, can form a, a, a keto group down here. Maybe I should write it here. So the bond we had in this position here, the double bond, can actually attack the methyl group we up here, have up here. We have CH3 up here. So the, the end product we get would be methylation in this position. And then you can imagine once again we have almost up here we have an aromatic ring system. So this will tautomerize once again so we, we regain the phenol group. So this is the second important type of reaction you should bring home from today, ketoenol, and then C alkylation. We can also imagine then when we have the ring here in the keto form, once again, we can easily generate the, the, the negative ion here and we, we can steal away the CH3 group that is up here. So either system here where we have the diketo in, in beta position or the aromatic phenol uh, situation favor uh, alkylation in the auto position. So, in this way, we can actually explain how we, in this molecule, we have three extra C atoms added on to, to the original molecule. So here you can see we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's originally we would consider it a pent pentaketide. But the, the, the final amount of carbons in, in citronin is 13. So then what about this, this position? So we had Sam adding on methyl groups, I told you. 
in these three positions. How did we go from a CH3 group here? So what do we call this group up here? Can anyone help me? Carboxylic acid. Can you also tell me what, what, what might have happened here? Going from this methyl group to a carboxylic acid group. What do we call that? You know? Oxidation. oxidation. So oxidation is adding on oxygen to a carbon. This is oxidation. So when we have the first oxidation of the methyl group, oh, I should draw here. What will we get? Oxidation of a methyl group? What would be the first product? Alcohol. Alcohol. You're right. CH2OH. Then what next? Aldehyde. Aldehyde. You're right. So we form this type. And then eventually the last oxidation, we get the carboxylic acid group. So we can both, ha both have reductions and oxidations going on. So it's like I told you before. For oxidations, we have NADPA, NADP, which is an uh, acceptor of, of the protons that we we can imagine we have so we have uh, the double bond in here. It's not easy to see. We have a double bond in here. But in this case, we, we, uh, we get NADPH here, and we have the alcohol oxidized to the keto group. So we have a lot of enzymes taking care of these kind of reactions. Oxidases, we get the quinone here. We have monooxygenases and we have dioxygenases. So these are called P450 enzymes. And it's this, this is actually also happen in the liver, in the body, when we take drugs, the body want to make the molecules more polar so they can be excreted uh, in the urine. So, so same type of enzymatic reactions. So any questions to oxidations? So yes, we did have oxidation going on. So now we are almost, now we explained how we got the extra three carbons into the molecule, we explained how we got the carboxylic acid group. We explained how we got the OH. But in the final product, we actually kind of gone back to a keto group there. And we have some other kind of ring formed here. So, so what is happening in, in the last part of the biosynthesis? We need to account for that. 
So we have some kind of other ring formation taking place over here. So one way to explain this could be to say we have a reduction here. Now I think I will, oops. It's going to be more aggressive. <laughs> so, I think I would like to, let's uh, just talk about how, how this can be cleaved off. Now, we, this is a coenzyme A, sulfur ester. If we wanted to have this bond cleaved. This is just an ester bond. So, I'm not doing very well now. <laughs> so, estra hydrolysis, the way we explain it generally, would be we have hydroxyl group, OH minus, and there we can have an attack in this position. We can't have five bonds to this carbon here, so we do it the usual way. We split this double bond, and then because we have a good leaving group here, we reform The, the keto group, and we have maybe H plus here that can bind here. So, so what I just illustrated is we have extra hydrolysis here. So if we take the product of what I draw, then it would be coenzyme A, sulfur, and then we would have the carboxylic acid group, and the rest of the molecule. So I just asked you how we got to the carboxylic acid group, and now we can reduce that. So we can, let me see how I can draw this. I'd like to go from this carboxylic acid group, one reduction, I get the aldehyde like I was told. So here we have the aldehyde, now we have the OH. So I'd just like to, to tell you that this is as complicated as it gets in this course. So if you get this structure at the examination, one of you will probably get it, and you can explain what happened, then you're very good. <laughs> so most of the polyketides we deal with are aromatic ones, and we can explain them by Claisen or aldol condensations. But this ring system here is quite complicated. So we just thought we would show you that it can also be a little complicated here. So now we actually want to go from here to here. So remember we had, we had some reduction going on up here. Now we have an aldehyde here. So what we, the way we can actually explain what is going on here 
is that we can have the attack here. We have a lone pair here. We can have an attack here. So this will generate So sometimes when we explain what is going on in a molecule, we will only draw part of the molecule. So this is what I illustrate here. I just drew the, the right part of the molecule. So this we call a hemiacetal. So when we have a carbon here, that is actually bound to do two oxygens, one is part of the ring and the other is a hydroxy group. Uh, so now I need, it's getting a bit complicated here. Do you want the blank slide? No, I think I will just draw the whole molecule. Ah. Ah, I'm sorry. So, so now I have the hemiacetal here, and now I only need to get here. And this we can explain, if we have a base here, we steal the proton, and then the, we can have formation of the keto group here, this one, and then we can have the electrons kind of rolling through the molecule. We go here, keto group, we move the double bond here to this double bond. We move this double bond here and we lose water up here. So hopefully I managed to explain the number of reaction that is involved in the biosynthesis of this small molecule. So, so I'd, we would like to emphasize at this point then when we get to the examination situation we would never draw these arrows and ask you to account for moving around the electrons. You have, at the end, you have your own task. You get one biosynthesis to, to, to look into. And for that one particular, you would go into more detail about the different steps. So any questions? So if I should kind of recap on a more easy molecule at the end, we could see
that what we've learned today, the joint uh, lectures, we had this aromatic part over here. And Maria told us that we formed a CC bond here. And we didn't have a good leaving group, so we had aldol condensation. Then in my second part, I told you that to generate the aromatic ring system, we had keto enol. Tautomerism. This is how we generated the two phenyl groups. Here we have an ester bond, we can cleave that. So what we learned in this second part was that we had oxygen here, we had oxygen here, we do have this, we did have one here. So in three positions, four positions, one, two, three, four, we had reductions going on. So up here, we, we started out by a keto group. We had just reduction of the keto group to an alcohol. Keto reductase activity. The oxygen that was in this position here, initially, was also reduced to an alcohol by keto reductase activity. Can you put the Ah, uh, you're right. Thank you. You are completely right. It was here. So first this uh, carbonyl group was reduced to an alcohol and then it was further reduced to the double bond. In this position down here we had three steps of reduction. Keto group, alcohol, double bond, aliphatic group and the same in this position. So this is this part of the molecule you would call highly reduced and the other part would be aromatic polyketide. It's not that common that you have one molecule that is divided into two. So this kind of sums up the take home messages for today. We have more exercises. And the solutions for the last exercise, they will be uploaded, but we will go through them on the next lecture on biosynthesis. So it's up to you how long you're going to have fun with them and how much coffee you're going to drink. Should we uh -huh. <coughs> consider calling it? Ja. Skal vi lukke for i dag? Jamen, de laver opgaver, de må selv bestemme, når de går. Der er ikke flere forelæsninger. Så der er ikke flere lektioner i dag, og jeg tror, hvad vi vil gøre, er, at vi vil starte næste mandag med at give dig de løsninger til den anden del af de eksercises. De af jer, der vil blive her, vi vil være her. Og hvis du vil gøre dem på hjemme, and have the solutions next time you can decide to do it at home. Yeah. But before you leave, there's a poll open about, you can type in what things you found particularly difficult today. So you'll have a chance to make a wish list for things you'll hear more about next time as well. So please fill that out. It will be open. Uh, for the next week. So if you get a chance to think for more about more things, you can type in extra comments and, and, and questions.
But like Thomas said, we'll go through the exercises for the last part next time. So you'll have all the answers for that. Yep. And we will be here. No.